Welcome back to Casual Evil, where we delve into the chilling stories that expose the darkest corners of human nature. Today, we are diving into a case that shocked the nation with its tangled web of sex, jealousy, and psychological manipulation. A case that proves how ordinary people are capable of committing the most horrifying acts. This is the story of Travis Alexander and Jody Arias. In 2008, Travis Alexander, a successful motivational speaker and devout Mormon, was brutally murdered in his home in Mesa, Arizona. The prime suspect was none other than Jody Arias, his ex-girlfriend. Their relationship had been a whirlwind of intense passion and growing tension, which ultimately culminated in a brutal crime that would capture national attention. We will explore the complex relationship between Travis and Jody, the chilling timeline of events leading to Travis's murder, the shocking revelations from the investigation and the dramatic courtroom battles during the trial. Viewer discretion is advised as we discuss graphic details and sensitive topics. As we delve into the past, it's important to understand the lives of Travis Alexander and Jody Arias before their paths faithfully cross. Travis Alexander was a respected motivational speaker, insurance salesman, and devout Mormon. Born on July 28, 1977 in Riverside, California, Travis had a challenging upbringing. He was one of seven children raised in poverty with parents who battled drug addiction. Despite his difficult childhood, Travis found solace in the Mormon faith. His religion became a cornerstone of his life, guiding him towards success and providing a moral compass. In contrast, Jody Arias hailed from a seemingly normal family in Salinas, California, where she was born on July 9, 1980. However, she described her upbringing as abusive, an experience that may have shaped her psychological makeup in ways that would later become a focal point of the case. Their worlds collided at a conference in Las Vegas in September 2006. Jody was captivated by Travis's charisma, and they quickly developed a romantic relationship. Despite living in different states, their bond deepened, fueled by an intense physical attraction. Soon after they met, Jody converted to Mormonism, a decision widely seen as a testament to Travis's influence. They started dating in February 2007, but their relationship was far from straightforward. They were caught between their passionate physical relationship and the teachings of their faith, which promotes chastity before marriage. This tension, a battle between desire and devotion, added a strain to their relationship. The psychological dynamics between Travis and Jody also began to raise eyebrows. Friends of Travis's reported that Jody exhibited obsessive behaviors, such as talking him and slashing his car tires. However, Despite these alarming signs, Travis kept their sexual relationship alive, even after their official breakup in June 2007. The relationship between Travis Alexander and Jody Arias was a volatile mix of sex, love, and obsession. Little did anyone know that this toxic cocktail was brewing a storm that would end in a brutal murder. After Travis and Jody broke up in June 2007, the relationship remained complicated. They continued their sexual relationship, even as Travis began dating other women. Jody, consumed by jealousy, began spying on Travis. She would check his social media, listen to his voicemails, and even allegedly break into his home. As Travis sought to move on, Jody found it increasingly difficult to let go. Fast forward to May 2008. Travis was planning a work-related trip to Cancun, Mexico, and had initially invited Jody to accompany him. However, due to their complicated relationship, Travis decided to take another woman, a fellow Mormon named Mimi Hall, instead. This decision was a catalyst for the events that would soon unfold. On June 2, 2008, Jody rented a car and began a road trip from California to Utah. On June 4, she arrived at Travis's home in Mesa, Arizona. They spent time together and even took intimate photos in the shower. It was during this visit that Travis was killed. The brutality of his murder was shocking. He was stabbed 27 times, his throat was slit, and he was shot in the head. The next day, Jody continued a road trip to Utah, where she spent time with a love interest and former co-worker, Ryan Burns, who noted that she had cuts on her hands, but otherwise acted normal. Upon returning to California, Jody called Travis's voicemail multiple times, leaving messages and pretending as if nothing had happened. She even sent him a letter postmarked after his death. This timeline of events paints a chilling picture of the days leading up to and following Travis's murder. 
but it was the investigation that would reveal the horrifying truth behind his death. On June 9, 2008, five days after he was brutally murdered, Chavez's friend discovered his body and called 911. They immediately pointed investigators towards Jody Arias, citing her obsessive behaviors and tumultuous relationship with Travis. The crime scene was a treasure trove of evidence. Among the most damning was a digital camera found in Travis's washing machine. Despite an attempt to delete all its photos and wash away any evidence, forensic experts managed to recover the images. These photos included explicit images of Jody and Travis from the day of the murder, as well as accidental photos taken during the crime itself, providing a chilling snapshot of the murder in progress. In addition, a bloody palm print was found at the scene, which was a mix of Travis's blood and Jody's DNA. The print was left in a manner that suggested it was not from the cleanup, but from the time of the murder. On June 19, 2008, police questioned Arias about Alexander's murder. And as the investigation continued, Jody's initial claims of innocence began to crumble. She offered three different accounts of her whereabouts during Travis's murder, each filled with inconsistencies. At first, she claimed she wasn't in Arizona at the time of the murder. Then she changed her story, stating that two masked intruders had broken into Travis's home and attacked them both. Finally, she admitted to killing Travis but claimed it was in self-defense after he had attacked her. The investigators weren't convinced. The physical evidence was stacked against Jody, and her constantly changing stories only made her appear more guilty. Her jealousy towards Travis's new love interest, coupled with the nature of the crime scene, pointed towards a crime of passion rather than self-defense. The case was solid. Jody Arias was arrested on July 15, 2008 and charged with first-degree murder. As the investigation closed, it was clear that it was not the end, but merely the beginning of a highly publicized and dramatic trial. The trial of Jody Arias began on December 10, 2012 more than four years after Travis Alexander's murder. The spotlight was on Jody as she presented her case, claiming self-defense. She portrayed Travis as a sexually aggressive individual who abused her, contrary to the image of a devout Mormon he projected to the world. The prosecution presented a different narrative, portraying Jody as a scorned woman, driven by jealousy and obsession. They argued that Jody planned Travis's murder because he was moving on with another woman. Jody spent 18 days on the witness stand, a highly unusual length of time. Her testimony included explicit details about their sexual relationship, further sensationalizing the trial. This was a deliberate strategy by the defense to paint Travis in a negative light, which sparked controversy and debates about victim blaming. The psychological aspect of the trial was pivotal. Mental health experts testified, offering differing opinions. One for the defense diagnosed Jody with post-traumatic stress disorder and amnesia, suggesting that her memory gaps were due to the trauma of the incident. In contrast, the prosecution psychologist argued that Jody demonstrated characteristics of borderline personality disorder, which could explain her manipulative behavior and intense emotional swings. Religion also played a role in the trial. The defense used the strict sexual ethics of Mormonism to argue that Travis led a double life and manipulated Jody. The prosecution, however, countered this narrative, arguing that Jody used religion as a tool to get closer to Travis and later as a weapon to malign him in court. The trial was a media circus, with every twist and turn broadcasted on national television. The courtroom drama, the salacious details, and the shocking evidence captivated viewers, making it one of the most high-profile trials of the decade. After months of dramatic courtroom battles, the verdict was finally handed down. On May 8, 2013, Jody Arias was found guilty of first-degree murder. The jury concluded that Jody had not killed Travis in self-defense, but I had instead murdered him in a premeditated act fueled by jealousy and obsession. The sentencing phase of the trial was equally dramatic. The jury was tasked with deciding whether Jody should be sentenced to death or life in prison. However, they couldn't reach a unanimous decision, resulting in a mistrial for the penalty phase. In a second sentencing trial in 2015, a new jury faced the same decision, but they too were deadlocked. According to Arizona law, this resulted in an automatic life sentence for Jody Arias. The judge, therefore, sentenced her to life in prison without the possibility of parole. 
the public's reaction to the sentencing was mixed. Some believed that justice had been served, while others felt that Jody had manipulated the trial with her claims of self-defense and abuse. Nonetheless, the trial and its outcome had a profound impact on the public's understanding of domestic abuse, mental health, and the justice system. She is now serving her term as a high-risk level 5 prisoner at the Arizona Prison Complex in Perryville. As we conclude our exploration of the Travis Alexander murder case, it's important to reflect on what we've uncovered. This case wasn't just about a murder. It was a tragic tale of a relationship gone horribly wrong, marked by sexual tension, jealousy, and psychological manipulation. The story of Travis Alexander and Jody Arias serves as a chilling reminder of the dark side of human nature. It shows us that beneath the surface of everyday life, Extreme emotions can drive individuals to commit unimaginable acts. It reminds us to always question, to always dig deeper, because truth can often be stranger and darker than fiction. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the intricate and chilling case of Travis Alexander's murder. If you enjoyed this video and wish to join us in future investigations, please like, share and subscribe to Casual Evil. And remember to hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of our weekly true crime videos. Until next time, stay safe and keep seeking the truth.